Today, I've got a real good one for you guys. Um, I'm kind of, I wish you guys would drop me some comments. I'm kind of trying to uh, keep things fresh and everything. I want to know what you guys want to see, but I thought it'd be interesting to hook up the microscope again today and to uh, look at our styli under the microscope and to do some uh, stylus cleaning. So we've talked a lot about records and how to clean the records and things of such nature. Well, what if your records have dust on them? The next uh, method to great audio production from a record, we have to make sure our needle that our diamond that actually goes into the groove is clean so we don't pick up a lot of static because the dust itself and everything can translate into pops and clicks whenever that it makes static electricity. So we want our diamond to be as clean as possible. So I've rolled up my sleeves and brought the microscope. We're going to be looking at the uh, same three cartridges we've been using through most of the videos. The uh, two in black Shibata Nude, the uh, Nude uh, Micro line of the Audio-Technica PTG33 Mark two on a boron cantilever and the Sure M97XE equipped with the LP gear of Vivid Line Stylus which is actually a bonded line contact stylus on an aluminum cantilever. Each one of these are actually going to show kind of um, some different methods to cleaning. I have used uh, three different brushes on here. I've used a traditional carbon fiber brush that looks kind of like a uh, toothbrush um, that comes with uh, the Ortofon Styli and it's also available standalone from LP gear. It's a pretty common one. It's a round head. I'll show you a little bit later in the video. I've got this other uh, stylus cleaner that looks kind of like a Q-tip, um, but it's not a Q-tip. Let me say, never use a Q-tip. That's a horrible idea. You will break your cantilever. Boo. But it looks kind of like a Q-tip. I got it from LP Gear. Uh, I just want to see how it fared. And then I've got the uh, brush that looks kind of almost like a miniature camera lens brush that came with the Audio-Technica um, cartridge. And then I've got uh, our friend and some folks' enemies, the Magic Eraser. Now I'm looking, at, I'm using sheets here. There's a way that you do it the, uh, and that's safe. So I, So let's talk about those methods and the safety of them. So I'm down here in the floor and it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but that's okay. I want to kind of go into a little bit more depth about what we're going to be doing today. So let me show you the brushes we're going to be using. So this is that traditional like round stylus brush I was talking about. If you look, this one's actually branded. Let me see if I can get focus. Nope. Ortofon on the back. So this is an Ortofon Styles brush. This is that crazy little Q-tip thing I was talking about. Kind of interesting. And this is the uh, one that came with the Audio-Technica. It's kind of like a camera lens looking kind of brush. And it says Audio-Technica right on here. Pretty nice little brush too. This is Magic Eraser. I'm using a thin sheet. A lot of people use the cube and they kind of twist it and stuff. I generally am just a dipper in here or I will take and I tell a dirty little secret, you gotta be very careful. I'll take and blot it a little bit like this. So let me, cartridge holder, let me grab our sure cartridge here. So I do want to show you this. So we'll start with this brush. You can see here, I'm holding this upside down. Let me see if I can get it to focus. There we go. So you can see the stylus here. The one thing I'll tell you is you always want to go this direction. Back to front. Back to front. Never go this direction. Never go that direction. You will break your cantilever and you will either have to get a new cartridge or a new stylus and you will cry because that can be expensive. So back to front, back to front always. Okay. 
Also, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the magic eraser and my technique. A lot of times what you'll do is people will put it here and they'll have their needle on it. You'll put this on your platter and you just lower your cue. Lower your cue. If you feel a little bit more comfortable with it, there's some pills like, oh, we'll go up and down the uh, uh, can liver on stylus and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. I've, I've had a few too many accidents like that. So let me see if I can get this to focus again. Okay. And there we go. Now the cart is in focus. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of like fold this up. See that? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip, dip, dip. You never want to rub with Magic Eraser. If you rub with Magic Eraser, you're going to break it. Magic Eraser. And that's kind of, you know, what I wanted to bring to your attention. You've got to be very careful with Magic Eraser. Magic Eraser will destroy and break your cantilever faster than you ever thought possible. If you take it and you pull it, it it's got microscopic thousands of little tiny uh, things. You never want to wet it, number one. You always want to keep it dry. You want to use a fresh piece that's only been used for this. Don't use one that you clean the toilet with or the uh, or the sink with, ever, okay? Um, be very careful with it. If you want to be the safest, you dip it, but you don't let it move. I was showing you kind of how I do it. I've done it a lot. I've also had some accidents, so I know what to watch out for, but if you if it snags it, the, uh, we're talking little tiny pieces of boron and aluminum uh, and or ruby here. You will destroy them. So be very careful. I want to put that as a disclaimer. Please don't snap your cantilevers, okay? It's very, very easy to do. But now I'm going to show you kind of what the results look like under a microscope and why that you would want to use these. All right, let's go into the office and get started. And just so we're clear, when I'm saying let's put some more crud on it, I want you to look at that album. I'm trying my best to get it dirty because, I mean, that's, no, none of us would hopefully ever play an album that's this dirty, but I'm doing this in the name of science, right? But yeah, that's, that's a pretty dirty, cruddy album. Pull it back here a little bit. And put it back here through Peel Central. All right, so we're going to pull this up, stop it, lock it. You can see my little USB microscope set up here. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen this up, put it back over here on my inspection station, if you will. This is really what you guys have been seeing me do with this microscope stuff. I'm moving it backward and forward and tilting it and doing all the things I can to try to get you guys the best pictures of what's going on with this stylus at a low level. So let's go back to that and we'll see what it looks like now that I've made it even more a little cruddier and we'll go first with the ortofoam brush. Okay, so I'm very tempted to call this the filth cam. So I took the black for a spin on that uh, on the Steppenwolf horrible dirty record, which is this is why you do not uh, put your stylus on dirty record. So um, let, let's take a look and see what some of the ba various cleaning things do with the uh, Ortopon 2 in black. Here, let me get it back in focus. Okay. So Q-tip looking thing. I would argue that this one does 
a little bit better job on this particular stylus than it does on the other ones. Let me see if I can get us a flat background here so we can see it. So yeah, th this this one does okay. This stylus, the Ortofon 2 in black stylus, seems to be fairly easy to clean. We still have some crud lurking here, but look at the surface of this. It doesn't look bad. So now let's get the Ortofon brush and go over it. If I can find it. Black on black's never a good idea. I gave it a few good rubs there. Oop. Sorry, guys. Get it back here. Back in focus. So, interestingly enough, this one didn't respond as well to the uh, Ortofon brush. Look at that. We've got actually some hairs that appeared that weren't there before we actually cleaned it. Interesting. Interesting. So, let's try the Audio Technica brush on it. Wow. Now, I don't know if it's just the way this cantilever is is mounted or what it's made out of or the static properties of it or whatnot. And I'm trying my best to get some good focus on the camera. Well, okay. So, yeah. Hmm. So, let's use the magic eraser on here really quickly. So interestingly enough, the Magic Eraser actually did a decent job. Let me uh, give it one final brush with the Audio Technica brush. Just to kind of never, ever, ever, ever go against the grain. Why? Because you don't want to snap your cantilever like a twig. That's exactly what can happen. It's a very costly mistake. And it does. So yeah, so now we have a very clean diamond. Awesome. So we'll go give that a ride. Well, here it is. I let this play for a little while last night trying to get the uh, stylus buried in some goo. And look at there. There we are. That is not supposed to be white. If you remember from the uh, other video, this stylus was, uh, uh, it, it's a bonded stylus, but you can see it. Look at all that. The cantilever is completely covered in crud. So, the question is, and there's my coffee pot, uh, the question is, is, I'm going to try to keep this still as I can, what about this Audio Technica brush, let's see what it does. And that's, it's moderately clean. But look, we still got crud on it. So that didn't work. 
Worked okay. Still dirty as I'll get out. Let's see what the Ornithon brush will do. Well, that's much better. Still not as clean as it was. Now, let's do a couple dollops of Magic Eraser. Look at that. That's completely and totally clean. So now they try to kind of get a little bit of the surface residue off. So I'm going to go back and brush this guy off. And now, that's a reasonably clean stylus. I mean, there is still some surface dust on here. So, let me see if I can get rid of all of it off the cantilever by some old school method. Yeah, the, the good old use your breath technique. It worked though. So yeah, there we go. That's pretty clean. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, load this record up and get another one dirty. Okay, so much to my chagrin, I've put the primary Audio Technica cartridge and let it have a ride on that horrible album. And oh my god, look at that poor cantilever. So, Let's see what the Audio Technica brush that's included with it will actually do for it. Uh, we're almost starting to see a, a diamond. Almost. Hmm. Didn't work too well. What about the Ortophon brush? It did get a lot of the goop off the actual can lever though, so that's good. Look at there, the Ortofon brush actually revealed a diamond. It does have a diamond. Now for some magic eraser, and I've got to be super careful with this, because it's super delicate. And just like that, beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the AT brush. Look at there. So what happened? Just a moment, folks. So if you notice, the Q-tip brush, I'm getting ready to throw it away. Because look, it just put crap right back on here. So, Portophone brush, good deal. AT brush, good as gold. So, What are we learning? Well, I will let you know what I think here in just a moment. But yeah, you can kind of see there's still a little bit of crud on here. Let's uh, blot one more time with our magic eraser. Carefully. Yeah, man, that's 
about as clean as you can get one. If you notice, the since this is a boron cantilever, it's got all this uh, uh, black stuff. It's not bonded. That's just metal they have to build up so the diamond will actually adhere uh, to the cantilever. Okay, I'm coming with a final thought. Hey guys, so what do you think? So I'm going to have to quit calling these wrap-up spinal thoughts. I'm starting to feel a little bit like Jerry Springer, and with my accent, that's a bad thing, right? So, <laughs> um, so let, let's talk about what we found out. So it's really funny, depending on the stylus type and composition of the cantilever, it seems like kind of all the brushes have upsides and downsides, and some do a little bit better job. What was interesting to me was how much better this little brush did uh, on the two in black, then it was pretty obvious this brush here did a great job on the uh, on most of them. It did leave a little bit of residue behind, but what I found really interesting was this brush, the de facto standard. It did a great job on a, on most of the things, but for some reason it kept putting uh, some debris. Back on the two in black, it was it's kind of weird, and especially since it came with it, and this isn't a completely old brush. I keep them clean. Uh, one thing I will tell you is, what do you guys think about the magic eraser? Isn't it very funny how that all the styli and the actual diamond itself it looks like, even though after we brush it, it's like pretty clean, but there's like a little bit of crud on it. It's really funny after it gets a couple of dips with the magic eraser. All that crud's just gone, and, and, it, and it's very, very easy to do. I mean, honestly, I'll I can uh, revisit this with some on out zero dust or whatever, but I find those to leave residue on my style on. It picks up more gunk. I mean, that's just me. I'm not saying that's everybody's experience. But that's been mine. So, what do you guys think? Drop me a comment. Let me know um, what I can do better, or uh, or just give me some feedback. Let me know what you want to see. Okay. Uh, appreciate if you enjoyed this video to give me a thumbs up and if uh, you haven't already subscribed to this channel please consider doing so to see uh, videos like this and even more diverse things so until next time I'll see you guys from Ben's Audio Cave